Hello guys, welcome back to Snappy Gurus, and in today's video we're going to be looking at the stamina system, which we'll be implementing, and then in the next video we'll be going on to health, and then the inventory system. So to start off with, we're going to go ahead and open up the content, go to the characters, player, and we're going to be creating some new folders. So first of all we need enums, we need to go get strux, which will hold the stats. And then we're going to go into the components and create a new component class. So we're going to go and right click blueprint class, actor component, and I'm going to call this the stats component. And then we can go ahead and head over to the player, enums, create a new enum by going to blueprints, enumeration, e underscore stat mode. We can open this up and we're going to create two enumerations, one called increase and then one called deplete. Once we've done that we can go ahead and go over to the structs, create a new blueprint structure and call this s underscore player stats. This will hold the, uh, if we open up, this will hold the health and the stamina. So for now we're just going to have stamina and we'll add the health for the next video. And we're going to have the data type set to float. I'm going to save that and close. Now we're ahead and go to the UI, create a new folder called, let's call this stats. And then go ahead and create a new widget called W underscore player stats, which will hold the UI responsible for the stamina and the health. So for now, I'll make a new video in regards to the UI, but for now we're just going to use the progress bar, which should be on the left hand side of the screen, uh, just to simulate the uh, stamina, just so we can get a visual representation. So we're going to anchor that to the left hand side of the screen, like I just shown, and we're just going to pretty much stick it there. With the bar fill type going from bottom to top, so now if we change the percentage, you can see that it goes <laughs> accordingly. We're going to click the bind on the percent and create a new binding function. This will allow us to change it during runtime and we're going to right click the return value, promote that to a variable and call this stamina percent. We can then alt click the other node, pull off of here and go normalize to range. So this will allow it to go from uh, so let's say the stamina is currently at 100, we need that to go to a percentage format, so normalizing it will change it from a value between 0 and the max range. So for the max range we're currently going to have as a default as 100, but we'll change that in a second. Actually no, we could just do this now. So if we just promote that also to a variable and change this to max stamina, like shown, and connect that up to the return value. And then in both of these variables, we're going to have the instance editable, editable checked and expose on spawn. This will allow us to change these variables within the component itself. We now compile that and save. We're also changing the progress bar name to something easy to read, so something like pb underscore stamina bar. Alright, now we've done that, we can compile, save that, and close. And now go ahead and go to the components and open the stats component. Right, within the stats component, this is going to be a little bit, um, a little bit jarring at first, but we can delete the event tick, and then we can go ahead and initializing the component itself. So we need to create a new variable called player stats. And the data type for this will be the player stats structure, which we made previously. We'll compile that, and as you can see here on the right, stamina is hit. We can just change that to 100 for now. Compile that. Right, now we can drag out the player stats by holding Alt and then dragging it out, and that will have the set mode, or you can just go ahead and drag and click set. Now we need to go ahead and make player stats and we can right click the stamina like so. This will be called max stamina which will be also plugging in 
to the uh, to the widget we just made. After that, we're going to create a component. So uh, a macro. I apologize. So we're going to get an is valid node, and then we're going to get a, the owner of the current component. So this will be the character. From here, we can get the component by class. This component will be the character movement component. As we're going to be dealing with stamina and sprinting, we need to make sure we can modify the current speed of the character. So we're going to get the character movement component. And this can go ahead and go straight into the is valid node. From there, we can go ahead and drag that out and get the a reroute node. And then we can just click this into a branch. So if you hold B, you can put it in there or just add another reroute node as we're just using this currently as we can just set this into a macro. So this doesn't really matter. So from there, we can select these three nodes and then collapse that to a macro. We'll head over to the macros on the left, press F2 and rename this to get movement component. And on the right, the return node will be the movement component. And we can just click the arrow there so that it's at the bottom. Alright, perfect. From there, now we can go ahead and grab the movement component and get the current max walk speed. So this variable will be modifying to change the character's movement speed at all times. And we'll need to find the default variable or the default value of this at the start, the initial value. So we're going to promote this to a variable and call this character walk speed. And with this, we want to be able to categorize our variables. So here we're going to call this changeable. And then if you use the not or the or symbol, um, and then go ahead and put defaults. So just like that. So now on the left, as you can see, we've got the changeable category, and then that is a little parent of the defaults. All right, that's perfect. Now we can select this. All everything we've done, right click, collapse that to a function, and this function will be called the initialize or init stats. So initialize stats, pretty much. From there, we're going to create the widget. So create widget. And this shall be the player stats. From there, we need to get the stamina percent and the max stamina. So to get that, I'm going to go ahead and control drag the player stats, or you can just obviously drag that in and get. And we're going to right click, split, and just put that into the stamina percent. And here we're going to get the max stamina and plug that into the max stamina, like so. All right, perfect. Now we're going to promote the uh, the widget to a variable and call this w stats ref and then add this to the player screen. So viewport, add to viewport like so. Right now we can actually begin creating the timers uh, to handle the stamina per se. So we're going to go ahead and get the set timer by event. And then we're going to drag off of the event and then go ahead and create custom event and call this something like handle stamina. From here we can right click the time on the timer and set this to something called like stamina time. So this will be changeable throughout. So this will be the variable which basically means that it will change the uh, as, as it will be the time for where the stamina depletes basically. So you can change this to be it will go down by one um, one integer every like one second perhaps or every point one second. It's up to you. Uh, yeah. So let's create that and then compile and set this to point one as a default value. I'm going to set this to looping is true. From there, we can go ahead and right click the return value and promote that to a variable. And this will be called the stamina timer handle. The reason we're creating this as a variable is so we can stop and or pause it and unpause it at any given time to help with optimization. We're then going to go ahead and go over to the handle stamina 
and we're going to create a branch and then from this we're going to right click the condition and just check if it is sprinting so promote that to a variable and we'll call it is sprinting like so from here we're going to create two functions actually one function uh, and we're going to call this modify stamina within the modify stamina we're going to then go ahead and sorry uh, we're going to go ahead and get the um, the player stats, if you hold alt and drag it out, like so, and right click and split the stroke. Now from here we're going to clamp this value, so clamp float, and then after that we're going to get the, uh, the player stats again, because we're going to be adding or subtracting from it, and split the stroke here, Now we're going to be adding, so just put the add symbol and then get that. From here this can go ahead and go into the value and this can be connected up to the modifier stamina for now. From there we're going to then go ahead and put in for the max, max stamina of the plant like so. From here in D0 what we're actually adding to the stamina we're going to go ahead and get a select float, uh, no not this one, select and in the wild card, this wild card will actually be the um, e underscore. What did we call it? E underscore st uh, stats mode, and we can connect that up to the modify stamina function. After doing that, we're going to need a, a value, so we can just put, gra drag off of increase, drag that over here, change the name of increase to amount, for example. And then now that that's a uh, that's there, we can then go ahead and call for amount if we compile. <laughs> Get amount. And we're going to multiply this amount by minus one. So this will be if the uh, if you choose to decrease the uh, the stamina, then it will go ahead and select the deplete amount. So that will be mi multiplied by minus one of the amount we say. Um, it'll make sense soon. Uh, and I'll go over it in a moment, but that's pretty much that at the start. Right now that we've done that, we can go ahead and grab the uh, the the widget reference, and we're going to set the stamina percent equal to the current stamina. So off off of the clamp float node, we can just set that there, and that's fine. So now we can subtract and add stamina to our character pretty much through this component. So after that we can just go ahead and get a return node, compile, save and head back to the event graph. So now we're going to go ahead and get the modify stamina and plug that into the true and the false. Just control W to duplicate or control C or control, uh, control B. And then from there we're going to get the deplete if the player is currently sprinting, if not, increase. For the current default value we're just going to set it to 1 but you can change this value at any time. Uh, if you'd like you could also set this to a variable so you can change it during runtime rather than have it uh, hard coded. And that is finished. Now we can go ahead and go over here and we're going to actually get a stamina check. So we're going to create a new function called stamina check and we're going to head back to the event graph and then create a new set timer by function name. This function name will be the stamina check like so and this time on here will be the same as previous so stamina time and we're going to have that set to looping and we're going to automatically pause set time. So pause timer by handle. And we're also going to promote this to a variable. So we can unpause it when the player starts sprinting. So we're going to call the stamina check handle. Like so. Now then, we need to actually get the ability to sprint. So we're going to create a new custom event called Sprint, 
and another custom event called Stop Sprinting. Let's organize this quite nicely. We're going to get another branch and then we're going to check if the current player is sprinting or not. If the player is currently sprinting. Oh, actually, no, 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 we need to check if we can sprint. My bad. So, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function called can sprint. And we're going to grab the player stats and split the strut. From here, we're going to check if the stamina is greater than zero. If it's not greater than zero, then we won't be able to sprint. So we can get a return node from here and plug that in. And then on the return node, just click here, pure as the function name, uh, well as the function. This then allows us to have it so that we can just drag it out in the event graph without having to have exec pins. Uh, and keep it quite nice as it's pure. <laughs> and we don't really need any references, so it won't be, uh, it won't be null. So from there, we can go ahead and grab the timer, which we've just made, the stamina check handle and unpause it and then we're going to now create a new function called begin sprint speed so within here we need to get the get movement component macro which we made earlier and then from here we're going to set max warp speed connect that to the is valid and then we're going to basically get the stamina walk speed. So from that, it have we already made this? I don't believe we have, have we? No, we haven't. So we're going to create, a right click that, promote a variable, and call this something like stamina sprint. Actually, no, sprint speed. Player sprint speed. Let's call it player sprint speed. There we go. And we could set this to something, if we compile, we could set this to something like 800 for now. Uh, check this to instance editable, so we can actually modify this within the player. And just organize that. And then we're going to get the is sprinting boolean and set that to true. And we can back out of there and then go to the uh, function we just made and just drag it in after we've unpaused the timer. From that, we're going to go ahead and on this sp stop sprinting, we're going to pause this current uh, timer. And then we're going to be creating a new function which will basically reset the sprint speed. So for this, we'll be calling this reset sprint speed. And then within here, we're going to get the movement component once again and set the max warp speed. So, and for the value we'll get the character walk speed which we made right at the start of this component from that we can then go ahead and drag the is sprinting and as we're not going to be sprinting anymore it will be set to automatically to false we can then go ahead and drag that in here and we're pretty much done with this component now the next time we'll be going in here is to go over the um, the health and for now we are done with this so from there we can go ahead and open up the character so player third person character and we're going to create go on edit at the top project settings and go to input on input we can create a new action mapping called sprint and assign this to whatever key you wish. I'm going to use left shift. And we can go ahead and call for sprint in the character. Once doing that, we can add a new component at the top left, which is the one we just made called the stats component. And then drag this in. And we can call for the sprint and the stop sprinting events. On the press and release, and we're just going to comment that sprint sprinting uh, and that should be fine and good to go so if we save that and go ahead and play you can see the bars on the left 
and it's not working, great. Right, I apologise, I found the issue which we found. So basically I didn't actually finish the stamina check function and that is causing all of our issues. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to open the stamina check function within the stats component and within here we're going to go ahead and get the uh, a branch, so hold B and click and we're going to drag off of the condition, have an exclamation mark and get the not wall. From here we're going to get the, um, the player stats, split the stroke and get um, if it's greater than zero. If it's not greater than zero then we're going to go ahead and set it so that the player movement speed is back to the default. So to do that we're going to get the movement component macro which we made, grab the um, set max walk speed like so. Add, plug that into the is valid. I'm just going to straighten these up with the Q button. And then we're going to get the character walk speed, which we initialize at the start. Like so. And now, if we compile that and save, and we're going to make sure the player sprint speed is at our desired sprinting speed, we can change this within the character, by the way. If you just go to the third person character, click stats component, and go to the uh, default. Or the changeable, uh, we can see all the different things we can change here. Uh, talking about or speaking about that, I believe we should actually go ahead and categorize these. So for the uh, stamina, we're going to go ahead and click on max stamina category. And we're going to change this to the changeable, or and then we're going to get the uh, let's call this stamina. So so now we have changeable and the child is stamina folder with max stamina. And we're going to go ahead and put the stamina time, the um, anything else, the uh, player sprint speed for example. Um, actually this can go in the default player sprint speed. And then is sprinting, this can go into stamina 2. But actually no, we should make a new one. So let's call this one changeable, um, well no, not changeable. Or do not set, like so. Do not set, let's put that with there. Player stats goes in here too. W stats refs goes in here. And then for the timer handles, these can go in there as well. However, we will be having a subfolder for these called timers, like so. We can just drag them in there. So this is all perfect. So now if we go and compile, save, and play. You'll notice that if we do not hold shift, nothing will happen. If we hold shift, stamina will deplete, and then when we end the stamina, we'll start walking. If I let go of the shift button, the stamina will go up, I'll keep on walking, and if I hold shift again, we shall carry on to sprint. So yes, thank you for coming to this video. Um, the next one will be open in a couple of days from now, where we'll be looking at the health, and then after that we'll go into the inventory. I apologize for the long-winded video. Uh, the health one will be a lot shorter actually, uh, purely because we've got the base here already. Uh, the inventory one will be going over a few parts, um, although I believe it is quite easy to follow. If you have any questions about this video, please let me know in the comments or join our Discord and I'll be more than happy to help if you have any issues or if you find any bugs. Uh, so yes, thank you and have a beautiful day. Bye. -bye. Hey, by the way, a uh, quick thing before I end this video, i just like to mention, uh, if you'd like to actually deplete your stamina or increase it at any point in your character or anywhere where you can access the stats component, you can go ahead and let's do it for the jump for example as a quick example. So we can go ahead and grab the stats component and then add the, uh, the modify stamina function which we made and plug that into the jump and then we could set that to decrease and then set the amount to 10 for example and now if we compile and play when we jump you can see it depletes the stamina and that also works with the speed so that is just a quick thing I like to mention so if you'd like to actually you know begin to start making and fleshing out your game you can use this anywhere you'd please and it will work flawlessly so yes thank you again <laughs> and I'll catch you in the next video